You can introduce the Marlin to me. Yeah, right up. It's not a fun. Wait, does that not say uh, Good morning, everyone. We're here for the under 18 Snappers and Marlins game. Uh, we'll just quickly run through the teams. We've got the superstar first grade captain AJ with us. Uh, he'll just run through the Marlins under 18s team. Yeah, thanks, Pappy. Uh, welcome here. Beautiful day at Coffs Rugby Park. Um, so we're just starting, waiting on the Marlins players to come out. Um, it's been a couple of good close games in the in the junior grades with the 14s and 16, 16s. I think uh, Marlins have gotten up in both those games. Is that right, Puffy? Yeah, 26, 12 and 14s and 22, 19 and Yes, 16. so it was, uh, having both those games on at the same time has been, uh, been pretty good. So here comes the Marlins boys led out by... Um, Dylan Loader, I uh, believe he's still got another year to go in his 18, so going to be um, going to be good learning curve for him, leading the boys out and then rolling into next year. So we've got number one Sam Parks, two Leroy Davis, uh, th uh, not sure who's three, uh, four Cole Johnson, Dylan as I said, six Cooper Robinson, seven Ash Chapman, eight Ethan Duncan, nine Ollie Kenning, ten Jack Kenning. 11, Oscar Dawes, 12, Alex Pike, 13, Michael Spinolio, 14, Ryan Kellum, Kilomeyer, and 15, Hunter Turchwell. So uh, they're the Marlins boys ready to go today. For the snappers, we've got at one, Peter Becker, two, Jack Killen, three, and cap at captain, Hamish Butcher, four, Josh Finchon, five, Harry Dickens, six, Patrick DeCarli, seven, Zachary Emery, eight, Veroniki Durura. Uh, 9, Ashton Chapman, 10, Jonah Colvin, 11, Tom Crossingham, 12, uh, Darcy, the best, Collins, Collins, 13, <laughs> Joshua Miller, 14, Paul Plummer, 15, Aidan Chapman. Uh, this is the grudge match. This is the one that decides who gets bragging rights at school this week, so it's a big game. Absolutely, mate. Obviously, a lot of the boys here go to school with each other, um, you know, mates outside of rugby circles and, and played a lot of rep together. So this is this is always a big big grudge match between the two teams. So kick off here. Two of you to start. Good take there by Leroy Davis here under pressure. You, you would have had a bit as sort of the club coach for Marlins. You've had a bit to do with sort of setting that junior structure up with Marlins. He, probably been one of the best clubs in the zone for the last couple of years. Is that oh, I wouldn't say that, <laughs> but, um, but no, mate, obviously as part of my role as rugby director is overseeing, um, you know, the whole rugby program. So, um, you know, it, it is good uh, as Ollie Kenning kicks that through there um, to see, you know, all the all the juniors and working with them. So, um, and obviously there's a lot of lot of players out there who've already, already got a taste of first grade now. So um, it's it's good to see. Snappers there, the number eight. Uh, he is a uh, one to watch. Yeah, absolutely. He's quite dynamic. Um, watching him the other week, very good ball carrier. Got a lot of skills and and uh, definitely a, a future representative player, I think. So, it's a big hit. Um, as as great great line speed and, and contact there through the Marlins, but good control here from Snappers, Paffy. Um, you know, I think that's about third or fourth phase they've controlled this now. So just working out the backs now. This is probably where the Snappers have. Probably lacks in under 18s over the last few years. It's just that sort of punch in the backs. We've managed to compete with teams in the forwards, but it's just getting that punch on in the backs. It's, it can be caught going sideways a bit, I think. Yeah. Uh, it's a penalty here. Uh, who's actually who's our referee today? Is that there? Is that Lance? Is I it? I think that's Lance. Yeah. So uh, just not releasing there around the ruck area. Um, so obviously. You know, Lance has got his own interpretations with a lot of things, so uh, there's something both teams are going to be, have to be aware of today. Yeah, I think he's, um, every ref's got their quirks, but he's got to adapt to that and hopefully, hopefully a bit of flowing rugby. It's a great day for rugby. It's a beautiful team. Yeah, it's, compared to uh, the, with, the, with the senior senior players, the Harbour Knights travelling out to Glen Innes last week, obviously Paffy was, was pretty cold out there, wasn't it, mate? Yeah, well, yeah, I think the Walker boys will be bringing their shorts and singlets down from the mountains. They'll be loving this weather. There's already a, they've already been ch chat. They're going to be hitting beaches and things like that. So uh, I'm glad we got the home game today in, yeah. in regards to the Knights. Uh, the only disappointment will be that none of the nightclubs are open. <laughs> <laughs> Marlins looking to exit here through uh, Alex Pike. Great kick there. 40 metres on the fly, so... A great chase there by Marlins. Oh, good contact. It was uh, Hunter Churchwell, I think. Snappers 
forwards, but got there quick, got relayed there. He was isolated, which is good to see. Looking through, just picking around the 10 channel there from the snappers. Again, mate, like you said, they, they seem very controlled. They've got some good presence around the forwards with the snappers. So, oh, great offload there. That, that's Paul Plummer there, fighting hard there. Done well. Paul Plummer actually, uh, he's a uh, good, he's an uh, old man's an Arara rugby league legend. I think he's played over 200 or 300 first grade games for Arara. So he's he's definitely a, a tough fellow. It's, it's in his blood, yeah, I think, young um, Plum. I haven't tried to tackle him at training. He runs pretty hard. He doesn't, doesn't give an inch. <laughs> so. Darcy Collins oh. there, great show and go. And he's through. Great oh, Darcy. work there from Darcy Collins. And I think is that and they yeah, and water with a try. That's, That's a great, a great, in, great individual try there from Darcy. For those that don't know, Darcy most likely would have been running around in at least reserves or first grade this year if the local comp was going on. Um, but with the combined team, he's chosen to stay with the 18s, which is good to see. Um, definitely adds a lot to the Snappers 18s. He's a very handy player. Absolutely, he just showed his class and he was a level above. He uh, obviously had had some good width and, and numbers on the outside. But stayed nice and square, and and through that that little dummy, and then and then did a lot as well to finish through the fullback. So um, that puts snappers early on in the lead, and should have a, a, another two points to follow. So pretty good control there, Puffy. We, we we spoke about all the snappers forwards a lot lately, but um, obviously you know that was some pretty good individual brilliance there from from someone who like you said is is rated as a senior player anyway yeah i think um i think sometimes rugby can be over complicated sometimes it's just got to get the ball to the Do right you, blokes yeah um, absolutely. and i think uh it's probably something we'll see this afternoon we've got to got to let the backs have a run and hopefully they can put some points on the board just like that and there's a kick there so that's seven nil to snappers about 25 to go in the first half it's great be interesting to see how the Marlins hit back from here, whether or not they go for their short kickoff option, looking to get Dylan Loader up. Obviously, aerially very good in the air and very good in the line out, so um, I'm hoping here Ollie's putting some putting some height up for him and and uh, we get the ball back here in regards to a Marlins ball. Gone long and high anyway. Is um, Dylan Loader, is he one to watch in the future, you think? Oh, mate, absolutely. Well, he's, he's uh, again, Someone who's got a, a little bit of a taste for first grade coming on um, against the Snappers uh, a couple of weeks ago. So very much still a development player, but all, all the right at attributes are there. And, and the good thing is he's, he's, really, uh, he's a really good hard worker and, and he wants to do better. So, um, you know, I think definitely if he, if he keeps his, his mind frame right and, and keeps his body right, he could, he could definitely uh, go somewhere with his rugby if he wanted to. So, um bit of a relieving penalty there for snappers. I think they'll be pretty happy to take the line out just on the 40. Absolutely. It's a bit of space out wide if they get it there. Darcy's Darcy again. Oh, oh just trying it's... to force that pass there. And mate, sometimes you get that. Like with, with a quality player like he is, he you can sometimes overplay your hand. Um, obviously, you know, the option there would have been just to, to hold that and take that in and, and look to build pressure on the back of that. So... Um, you know, going forward, obviously that won't affect his confidence too much. But being being able to get that right balance of injecting yourself and, and not overplaying your hand too too much is is sometimes hard when you're dropping back into yeah. into 18s or a lower yeah. grade. I guess it's sort of knowing when you need to be stepping up and doing that versus when you can just take it in. That's yeah. probably hard when you're finding it a bit easier or, or you're finding those gaps that other blokes aren't finding. Absolutely. Scrum here. Solid hold. That's a great little scrum play there. Hunter Churchill straight through, and he's lost a forward there. And I think that was a nice little inside ball from Jack Kenning. He's another one that's been playing a fair bit of first grade over the last sort of 12 months, coming in off the bench and flooding him early. He's, I'd say he's probably one of the more handy young tens getting around in the comp. So, yeah, absolutely, mate. I, th I think. Um, you know, long term wise, whether or not that's his position, um, but he's definitely got all that attributes for a nine or ten. Yeah. Um, you know, you, definitely annoying enough on the field. Absolutely, you don't <laughs> you don't hear him shut up, so which is very much a, a halfback's attribute. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it, he's def, definitely one of the leaders 
you know, naturally out there as well as being a game manager. And, and obviously you've got the backyard combination with Ollie there, his brother, you know, so they've always, uh, always out the back of their place up at Mooney and, and you know, discussing tactics and, and game plans and, and things like that. So uh, yeah, pretty good combination to have with your brother on your inside anyway. Good blindside play there. Solid run from the young Plum, Josh here we go. Young Plum's on down the left edge here. He's done, He's done really well to hold that. Snapper's just looking to get a bit of shape here. We've oh, got plenty slot. of space out on the right here if they can get it out to Darcy again. A little bit too slow. Give the Marlins an extra second to recoup. Josh Miller there giving it to Darcy. They're going wide. Wingers. Done well there. Great work there from the snappers winger. Right. Probably didn't really need that offload. Again, Paffy just pushing that pass. Um, our outside back. So I think I think it can be a symptom of the 18s. They get up for these Marlin snappers games, and they just want to. I think they really want the win so badly that they look for that miracle ball when Absolutely. they really take it in. Just like that again, <laughs> again with the, with the Marlins. It's, play on. It's, it's come <laughs> off. Just taken out there just over the snappy side of the halfway line. So, my couple of handling errors, um, you know, starting to show up with the outside backs. Obviously, that's something the coaches are going to have to address there. Yeah. Um, I think, and how have you found with the uh, Harbour Knights, the, how are the young blokes finding it? Are they excited about the sort of getting to watch some of the better rugby and things like that? Absolutely, I think so, mate. Um, you know, I've already got some of the 18s boys trying to, trying to sneak their way in for a run it's Pretty as well. competitive so, team. Absolutely, you know, and, and obviously, you know, you and me were both there on the original night where we sat down and, and, and put this all together. So I don't know about you, mate, but I, I'm certainly blown away of how our biggest become as Leroy oh, Davis gets a great, great ball away to Oscar Churchill, finishing with a dive in the corner. That is a great try to Mark. Great there. team try there. This shows so, you can't nap at all if you... You switch off indeed at all down that little blind side channel. They've got some pretty explosive backs out there that can score from anywhere. Absolutely, mate. It just shows there the real importance being a being a quality catch passer, no matter what position you are there. So we saw Leroy Davis was actually one of the last guys to give that pass who, you know, traditionally a number two, you know, being being a hooker, you're not expected to give those sort of passes. But, you know, hip square. Went at the defender and, and gave a nice little pop off to, to Hunter Churchill there. So it's um pretty pretty good pretty good attack from the Marlins. Yeah. And we've just had a call in from Grafton. The uh, Walker side is in Grafton. They've gone to the sale yards, and uh, the Ford Pack are wrestling steers. AJ, how does that make you feel? Oh mate, look, I've, I've been out to Walker before, and they they do things bit differently out there so I'm probably not really that surprised to be honest um, so look they're, they're, they're definitely some tough tough boys that come out there when you when you're playing footy in minus eight degrees um, you know it's it's you got to be you got to be that Crazy. level of toughness yeah absolutely Good so kick. I think he's got Alex Pike nailed it from the sideline oh, it scores uh, that's seven all is it seven all yes. seven all so Mate, just what you expect from the local derby. And that's something I noticed with the two clubs combining, that, especially with your coaching philosophy, you're big on the forwards having that skill to, to be able to do that little catch and pass or, and, and pass that ball on if they need to. That's been something... I, snappers probably more traditionally are a direct team. Forwards hit it up, the backs do all the flashy stuff, but I've noticed that, that you're big on having the forwards set in that structure and being able to play the ball. Oh, absolutely. I think in the modern game, mate, you too. You're leaving yourself short if you if you you can't do it, you know. So, so we look here, perfect example there. The the Marlins in their attack shape and just getting a little tip off there with in between the forwards. So, great counter up but through the side there. Um, just uh, you can build a lot of stuff off that structure in terms of it's a simple structure, but it opens up a lot of possibilities. Yeah, absolutely, that's right, Puffy. So it's like I said, mate. It's gone to the days where you've just you've got your front rolls that just scrum and that's it. You know, oh, the wingers almost kept that almost. in, unfortunately, but it's good effort there. So we got a line out, just uh, oh, what would you say? Probably 30 meters out from the probably snappers line. As a as a back, I reckon this is probably the favourite place to have a line Absolutely, out. Absolutely, yeah. It's open field. You've got plenty of space. 
good attacking option there. Dylan Loder with a line, line out. out. Clean ball. A little look, bit one out there. Look for a bit of a relay here. It might be coming out to the backs, but it's a bit slow and snappers have done well. I think they've probably shut down that opportunity. Oh, oh Ollie Kenning <laughs> should have probably given that pass. He's very good at his little dummy and his little blindside snipes, but he, he definitely got found out yeah. there. Josh Miller just tattooed him with his shoulder there. <laughs> oh, a bit of oh, chat. And that's one thing we all know, Lance. That's <laughs> why you don't question, you just go, oh, and Jack Kenning trying to go quick, as he always does. Yeah. Interesting uh, interesting story with uh, with Jack being, being the 14s coaches there today. He obviously, he just shows... The, Commitment some of these guys have, you know, he's coaching think, with the 14s, and I think then I've seen him refing, refing yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, running touches, and and then also, you know, he had about 10 minutes. Well, he actually had about five minutes to go before uh, before the the end of the under 14s game, and he had to shoot off to, to warm up for this game. So I think the family's a big family in the in the Marlins club. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Would uh, you know, it comes down to all volunteers, mate, in, in regards to both clubs and, and, and all clubs across the country with with yeah. bush footy and and uh, you know, and, and and all forms of rugby. Um, you know, would be lost without our volunteers and and obviously you know that that Kenning family is a big part of the wider Marlins family. And that's I think that's been the best thing to come out of the sort of merger of the clubs is it's really just put the focus on rugby. To be honest, we've just put aside anything else and. Uh, you know, we, a month ago we didn't think we'd be standing here and in the sun watching a, some rugby, so it's really good to be back. And yeah, absolutely. Sam Parks there, great carry. Bit out of position today, Sam. He's playing in the front. Oh, oh great and there's ball. that line. Leroy Davis, one of his favourite lines there, starting wide outside the third defender and coming in nice and short on Ollie Kenny. You, you see that quite a lot, Paffy, and uh, it's, it's definitely hard. come off for him there. <laughs> That's hard to stop. Absol five meters absolutely, there. absolutely. Scores uh, 12-7 to the kids. It comes about 15 minutes left in the first half. It's been a game, I think, a field position game. I think Marlins have dominated field position and snappers. We haven't really seen a lot outside of some runs from Darcy Collins. Um, we're gonna have to turn that round. No, nah, absolutely. It's um, it's still very much an arm wrestle though. Look, some very good quality rugby out there, and uh, we see Alex Pike taking. Taking the, this kick just just to the left of the upright, so he slotted that one from halfway. So you'd, you'd expect him to, to knock this one over pretty quickly. Now, Puffy, what about yourself, mate? How many kicks you you knocked over in your time, mate? How many goal kicks? Mate, uh, I could tell you some stories about a third grade <laughs> semi final that I won for the Monty Armadale Blues. I've heard rumours of it, mate, but it, I haven't heard the initial uh, story. So I think it was about a 50 kilometre an hour win from the sideline. You know. Yep. Kick seven from seven. It was a tough day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and got it. And that one used the premiership, did it? Yeah, yeah, yeah mate. It was great. Of course, yeah. it did. Yeah. I don't remember much after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, we got uh, another guy there running water for the Marlins. Fletcher Parlin. He must be injured at the moment. He's another guy who's, who's got a bit of a taste for first grade as well. So, um, you know, it's it's good to see the the depth in in both clubs. You know, coming up and, and great kick off. Great. They, that, good at that little short torpedo restart there, and it's definitely a hard one to take, Paffy. I think we've got a knock on against the snappers there. Have we had a referee change? Is Tonksy out there now? I think we might have got it wrong. We must, must have got it wrong, yeah. It must have been Tonksy from the start. <laughs> we might have pinned him between yeah. all the whistles. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> got, we'll get you some um, glasses there, Paffy. We, we're up close now, so we're all right. Yeah. But um, got a couple of the uh, young Marlins boys here yeah. that are that are actually coached by Jack out there, sending out a ten. So we might get them in for a quick chat and, and tell us about their game today and tell us about how their training's been. So right. what, bring what, you bring yourself to the mic, boys. What's your name, mate? Uh, yeah, I'm Flynn. Flynn, and what position do you play? Uh, open side. Open side for the Marlins 14s. Yep. And we got. Max. Yep, Max, and your position is? Number nine, half, scrum half. Half back for the Marlins. Yeah. So, hey, tell us a bit about uh, your coach out there at the moment. Um, what's he like? Is he is he a good coach or is he, you know, something you need to work on? Is he a better player? or is he talk yellow? Is he a yeller? Um, no, he's, he's really good because he, like, knows how to be, to be a kid, I guess. 
So is that because he still is one? Yeah. Yeah. Very he's nice. really good. Does he have any pre-game? What does he say to you before you run out? You know, just intensity, getting it there, just he's you know, trying what to do. I guess. Yeah. He's, he's playing, game plan, playing good. He's controlling the game really well, talking a lot. Yeah. What's the what's what's the best bit of advice he's ever given you? Um, with me, with you. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. It's always yeah. just keep stay with your team and. Keep, yeah. keep it going. Pretty good. That's, that's he got good. it off DJ. All right, and then now, boys, oh, this is a tough question. Why are Marlins better than the Snappers? Oh, because I mean, it's a better community. <laughs> okay, Whoa. there we go. Better Shots fired. Shots fired. Okay. We'll have to get quirky up here. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. yeah. uh, look, obviously now it, with the with the junior boys, they're still uh, very much involved in the clubs. But as a senior club, is it what's it like watching? Uh, you know the, the the Knights come to training and and gonna be what's it, what's it like gonna be out there today? You reckon? It's gonna be hard. Yeah. But I reckon it'll be. You know, it's good to watch the older boys because they they really understand the game. They they're really good, rough yeah. and tough, and just controlling the ball, controlling the game, and yeah, just really keeping it good. They know what they're doing. Yeah. So um, most important question of the day: Who's Who's your favourite player out of the out of the clubs? Probably Jack. Jack or oh, Alding. All right, thanks, Jack boys. That's another. One. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only joking. They've only no. watched a little bit of rugby. <laughs> 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 no, that's uh, that's pretty fair enough. They're both pretty handy players, and yep. and uh, obviously Jack playing a bit of first grade, and yep. and also Ollie playing a playing a bit of first grade in the trial at the start of the year. So they're yep. all uh, they're all pretty they're all yep. pretty good. That Experience. those that whole Keening family, aren't yep. they? Yeah. So. So we've got a scrum out here, five out, ten out from the Marlins line, looking to exit here through Alex Pike, I'd say. Yeah. Sure, Curry, great run, oh, good left good. foot step. I think you find more in the junior grades are definitely willing to run it out where yeah. the seniors, that might have been a kick. But Yeah, absolutely. You, you, you see that there, and that's probably a perfect reason why. We've turned the ball over on our 22, so... Um, as much as we do like to run it, um, it's, it's a bit of a Marlins mentality, really, but sometimes it is easy just to kick it, to, to kick it downfield. Yeah, That's yeah. right, yeah. So keep, Darcy Collins out there, to, he's just hunting around. He hasn't had the ball for a while, so I think he's due for a run. Yeah. Looks like there's some space out the right. He might want it here. Snappers, good ball control here. That's about their third phase now. Uh, Darcy Collins. A show and go. Yeah, a little show and go, showing his class there. Good. It's, uh, young William McCormack's had a couple of good runs there. He might have lost that one, unfortunately. I think, um, yeah, your initial knock, knock on, but um, really good. Something little there that he, he done really well. We just bought his team an extra an extra half a second by by just adding in that extra roll. So a lot of stuff that, you know, you don't really, while you're out on the field or, or, or watching from the sideline or, or on YouTube, thanks to Kyle Hands Media, um, is, is the little things that you don't really get, get to see. And something like that, even though it's, it, it, you wouldn't normally see it, an extra roll as he's dropped to the ground, it's, it's actually a big play because it's bought, it's bought his, yeah. his, uh, his team an extra half a second to hold on the ball. Those little effort plays that I think you do notice them on the field. As a player, you notice the blokes that strive that little bit harder just to give you the ball back. But I think it's easy to miss from the sideline, those guys Absolutely. doing those little Absolutely. effort plays. I think that's just rugby. It's all effort plays. You just got to get up and get there. It's all back-to-back -back efforts. That's right, Pappy. That's why I like to stand out on the wing and watch it. <laughs> So boys, talk me through, uh, obviously, a pretty tight win today. Um, yeah. it, was, it was a bit uh, bit back and forth, really, and yeah. until maybe the last 10 minutes where we got a couple of lucky tries from yeah. you boys. Yeah. Um, what, it, what did you make of you know, your game today, and, and what's something you guys can improve on in, know, in next we, week? We had a bad, it was a mediocre first half, and then we started lifting the intensity and yep. running good body height at the second half. Good body height. What else were you good in the, in the second half at? Um, we were good at, uh, you know, doing those nice chop tackles in our N22, yeah. getting yeah. in there, body height, and just picking the intensity up. We, we know we could win it, we just we just needed to execute it. Yeah, absolutely. That's something I've seen really, really uh, well executed. It was five or six low chops in a row, and... And, and the snappers, even though they had good control, really struggled to get that gain line and, and as a result got a turnover and, and a, yeah. a try on the far side. So, yeah. How have you been going this year? How many 
We've got uh, yeah. two wins and one loss. Yeah, it was a pretty close, pretty close game yeah, in uh, won, Port Macquarie. We lost by four points. Four yeah. points in Port. Ah, uh, uh, Port Pirates, wasn't it? No, it was oh. Vikings, Hastings Valley Vikings. It's almost a great little quick pass. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's snappers here looking to take control again, looking to pick and go around the edge of the ruck here. Again, Paffy, like you said, it's a bit of a bit of a traditional game with the snappers, keeping it tight, and then and then looking to swing, looking to get it out to these edges here through Darcy. And I think that's, that's a bad penalty there for snappers. It's not what they needed, but I think it's probably uh, probably stems from the coaches. A lot of the old boys are still floating around at snappers, and um, they like their traditional rugby, and yep. it, you know it, it, it works. And it's always good to see it's sort of traditional rugby in terms of. Hitting it up versus the sort of more more expansive stuff. Um, as a back, I like throwing it around, but you know the piggies love keeping it in the piggies. So. What What about you boys? Do you like to throw the ball around? Do you like to keep it tight? Or no, I like to throw it around. Being a halfback, obviously you'd <laughs> yeah. like to throw it around. So yeah, running up through our forwards can work, but it can also not work. So it's good to throw the ball around at the same time, get a bit of running running yeah. space. You might be the quietest halfback I've ever met. You can have yeah, to, uh, yeah. Start chirping a bit more. <laughs> yeah. Line out here just past halfway, looking to hit Dylan Loader again. Great line out. Again, like I said, Paffy, he's just aerial work is, is really good. And obviously at this 18s level, he's, he's, um, he's, he's a, a class above, really. The young, so. the young Reed, Reed Stevens seems to be a pretty handy forward, hard runner, good line out throw. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Bit of niggle here through a couple of boys uh, disagreeing on what they had for lunch during the week. <laughs> Not sure who or what started that. I wouldn't want to get Nicky started. He's nah. uh, one of those guys that doesn't say a lot, but once it gets going, it uh, definitely starts flowing nah, pretty hard. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's like that old adage, Puffy, you don't really want to poke the bear, and yeah. sometimes it's easy just to leave the little bit of niggle and off the ball stuff. You don't really want to take it any further because the last thing you want is a fired up Nicky ready to go. So. I saw him with his shirt off earlier today, and it was... Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's 16 year old that ripped. <laughs> <laughs> Put you to shame, did it, mate? Yeah, I've, I've called a Sada and they're, they're dropping in. Another good attacking opportunity here. Dylan's gone a bit early then, an overthrow from Leroy. It's a little knock on there, I thought, but might have missed that. Just a case of timing there, Puffy. Um, so obviously Dylan's trying to speed the line out up, get up and go, but when your hooker's not ready, there's no point in trying to rush it there. So, and that's what will cause that overthrow with the with the missed timing. And that's another one of those little things. Like that, that line out isn't just something that happens in isolation. That's sort of a whole pre-season of training and. That's something you work on throughout the year is trying to get that line out right. It's one of the yeah. most, probably the most crucial part of the game. If you can't win the line out, you yeah. can't win rugby. Yeah, absolutely. I know I can say that because Snappers Reserve grade <laughs> lost every single line out we had the other week. So. Bit of space out there for the Snappers, but it was well uh, taken care of. Of young Michael Spinolio, looks like he's just been injected off the bench. Um, obviously, he was one of the guys who uh, started against you guys in first grade a couple of weeks ago, Paffy, and his very first touch of the ball nearly nearly scored a try. So he's one of those uh, real quiet achievers, young Michael. He's he's but very much a, a got a rugby brain, and he's got a lot of talent, a lot of speed, and and a really good good kid. So mate, watch out here around these edges now for uh, for Mick to inject himself. How did you think if hypothetically the COVID hadn't hit, how did you think the Marlins would have gone this year in first grade? Looked like a pretty strong team when we played you. Oh mate <laughs> oh, to be honest, I, I I was I was hoping obviously a grand final finish. Yeah. Um, obviously it was spoken about last year, one of our goals was have a, a finally have a Coffs Harbour grand final. Yeah. Um, so you know, it would have been nice. Fairy Tale probably would have been a, a, a Snappers a Marlins Grand Final at, at Marlin Park. That, that's the hypothetical I'd throw yeah. out to you. So, but you know, obviously these things are out of our control, and and it's it's almost a bit of a blessing because we've got this massive opportunity with the Knights yeah. now. Yeah, and I think 
New England's one of those. Oh, that's a good run there from young Josh Miller, I think it is. Turn into it. I think what we talked about earlier, this boy's a bit too keen to Absolutely, yeah. promote look, that ball when they make the break. That initial nine back there, as we look for a little dink here from Ollie Kenning. There's oh, that backyard combination I've talked about. Oh. There it is. Yes. There's he got the legs. I don't think he does. Well done, Jack. Got to let there, go of that ball there. That might be a turnover. Yeah. That's good rugby, but that's what great you want rugby. To see. And we just spoke about that controlling that ball. We, that was probably one of the times where he probably <laughs> should have just flung that. we yeah. being been isolated on his own, but um, you know, they, like I said to you earlier, Puffy, there's that that backyard yeah. combination. No one else heard that call except for Ollie. Oh, then, so either. not out there. Hunter Churchill Jack's takes that. He's going straight back. Oh, some good rugby there, but. Good shape here through the forwards there, Dylan Loader, good carry. Might not be able to see it home, but Jack Kenning's out there sort of setting up to the left. Yeah, parking orders through his forwards, getting their shapes, getting their structures right. He's, he's obviously, that's a big part of his game, Jack, is his communication. So, um, like I said, being being just a natural leader and the game manager that he is, he's... Uh, He's Short enough to be a nine as well. <laughs> and that's right, yeah. <laughs> hey, boys, what do you notice out here? What's the difference, say, compared to your 14s games to to the 18s boys out here now? Is it you Less see much? Less tries. <laughs> Less tries, yeah, that's true, yeah. It's more competition. It's harder to score, isn't it? Yeah. Bit, bit, yeah. bit quicker. Yeah, a bit yeah. quicker, a little bit, bit quicker. harder. A little bit more physical. Yeah, yeah. Snappers getting over the ball really well. We, uh, we need to get to the rack a bit quicker and we'll, we'll be good. Yep. No, that's a good chat there. I think you'll notice that in New England rugby. I spent a few years up there at, at university. That that first grade level, with, especially with the uni teams, they're not big, but they're fit. They're all yeah. really fit. And, and traditional rugby players yeah, that know right. how to play rugby. Yeah. They're more spread out. <coughs> yeah, look. They know where they're supposed to go. Yeah, as you can see here, Jack's behind the ruck organising guys. They've, they've got more of a definitive attack yeah. shape about them. Um, so the guys obviously know where they're going and what they're trying to get to. Good structure. And I think across both teams, most of these blokes have been going for since they were, you know, 10 years old at Coffs Crusaders and they've come up to 18. It looks like this could probably be the last play in the half. So Marlon's just deciding what they want to do here. Um, wouldn't be. What's the rolling mall like here, AJ? Have they practiced yeah, that much? I, I think they have. I think you'd, you'd have to go to it. A couple of our, um, our bigger guys with Leroy and Sam Parks there at the front. So I dare say they'll just go straight up to Dylan here. Yeah, he'll set that um, up. Set that platform and and we'll go off the back of that. And there's that, <laughs> there's that missed timing again. It's all right, Tonksy was involved. I think snappers haven't really set up for the... Them no, I think they might be looking to compete here. No, nah, they've gone off the top, off a two ball, and that's sort of why that attacking platform, as a back puffy, you don't really want that two ball straight off the back no. there. You want you want it more of a four or a six ball to give you give you a, a, a better pass from the half. But yeah. still looking all right here. Great oh. short ball there from Dylan Raider, and there it is again, puffy that. That right shape from the forwards and just a nice little tip on there from Dylan Loder. Hip square to the defender and, and just that perfect line that Leroy, that unders line that Leroy loves running, mate. It's a, that's a perfect contrast of, of what we were talking about earlier in regards to our forwards. Yeah, and the young Leroy Davis, two tries there. He runs a great line near the, near the try line. He's definitely got a nose for it. So. Yeah, absolutely. Like we said earlier, mate, someone that big and strong, that short line, running those lines, it's, it's hard to stop. Take us to half time. Three tries there so far to Marlins. Just the one to Snappers. Kick to come. So that, that's bringing us to half time. Thanks for your time, boys. Good luck in the rest of the week. And uh, well, sorry, rest of the week's coming up. And um, go the Knights today. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, just AJ, what, tell me, what are the coaches going to be talking about at half time? Oh, look, mate. Uh, so like we like we spoke about earlier with Puffy, we're that, that field control, the last couple of times now we're from a good attacking platform, we've we've scored, the Marlins have scored points, just so missed, just missed that kick. Um, that's, that's definitely something that Joel and, and Eli will be talking about from the Marlins' point of view, um, you know, keeping that control, but also... The structure's been good, it looks like it's, it looks good on the field. It, it, yeah, that's right. I think 
in regards to the snappers, it's perhaps you correct me if I'm wrong, but it'd just be about giving more of those outside backs an opportunity, but actually holding on to it, not trying to force those passes. I think I think we talked about it earlier. It's a simple game. I think they've, they're setting the platform, and if, you, if you've got a strong forwards platform, you just need to be probably a few more crash balls for Darcy, and then, and young Josh Miller at 13 is a strong runner. Yeah. It doesn't need to be going, you know, three, four passes wide. It, it just set up wider, direct play. I think that would probably be a big difference for the snappers if they could get get someone like Darcy Collins in and around that sort of tighter channel, getting through some tight forwards in the second half and finding it getting some distance. But. Absolutely, like just just that that forcing of the passes. I think it's. It's the snappers Achilles heel at the moment. So if they can tuck that away, keep ball retention, build a couple more phases, I think we'll see a big comeback here from the snappers in the second half. Staying young, Oscar Edwards, a former under-18s player, coming in, ready for a big game today. He's, how do you, White? White Sevo. <laughs> White Sevo is known as now on the Knights, mate. So uh, obviously being a big Parramatta supporter, <laughs> um, and the way he's playing is very like, very much like a Mike Sevo. Um, so. Hence, uh, hence his nickname. But um, yeah, look, Oscar's obviously a, a, a real talent. He's got a great, great, uh, great finishing ability. So hopefully, we can see that today in first grade. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's like, geez. <laughs> Bloody hot up here, isn't it? Just about to start the second half here, another 30 minutes ahead. Uh, we confirm the score, it's 19-7 to Marlins. Big day of rugby up ahead, we after this we've got the women's game, that always some big hits in the women's game, and Marlins... Women's team new to the comp this year. They had a year off last year, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Cut last couple of years off, Paffy, and it, it's it's good to see the girls back out there. So, um, obviously, we we started with our very first training session. We had four and and it stayed at three and four and five for a long time, and then we slowly built up and and done some recruiting and. And uh, my, the main thing is the girls are really enjoying it. So yeah. that's obviously it's, it's a bit different now in regards to things like change rooms and bus yeah. trips and stuff like that. And um, but you know it's it's really good to have the girls around. And no, I think they love it as much as the blokes when they're out there. They put some shots on and they can... <laughs> absolutely. It's it's also seeing it's funny seeing the other side of the prep to it. Obviously, uh, my wife Katie, who's the Marlins uh, Marlin skipper out there, she's uh, who who pregame. <laughs> Pre-game preparation is a bit different to mine in regards to, you know, tans and things like that. So, um, you know, it's uh, it's like I said though, it's it's good to it's good to have the girls here. It's uh, just about to restart here with the 18s. Um, Ollie Kenning looking for his big high boot again. A lot of uh, a lot of I guess um, how do you say it? A lot of well, almost a lot of pressure on these on these guys with the, with the restarts and, and things like yeah, that, getting these right, trying to get them on the spot. I you think know, it's one it's, of those things that it, it's, it, when you watch it, everyone thinks it's easy. Yeah. But uh, if, when, you, when you stuff it up, it's, uh, it, it's all on you. And that's a great, great result there. 
um, from the Marlins. Probably would have been better off leaving it, young Patrick. But um, again, that's the pressure of the kickoff. Absolutely, I think, uh, yep. Again, as a back, I've watched plenty of forwards drop the kickoff, but it's always hard when there's a pack of forwards bearing down on you to, to take that clean catch. Great take again from Dylan Loder and oh. Jack Kenny's gone the gone the chip and chase, and I'll be talking speaking to him about that later on in the day and. I'm sure Joel and Eli won't be won't be happy with that. So I think that's something I've noticed with his game. He's just, he's just picking his spots. He's, yeah. He's, he's, it's just what, what happens when you're young, I guess. But he's, once he polishes that up, that'll be definitely something that will help Absolutely. him. Absolutely. They've really should get the ball back anyway and looking to get himself into some shape. Ollie Kenny just missed the bloke there, but well held Isolated. by Jack. Great clean out there from, who was that? The um, oh, Cooper Robinson coming in very low to high. Ollie Kenning clearing the ruck and, and again good carries here from the Marlins. Bit slow around that ruck there, but looking to find their shape now. They've just lost a little bit of shape here, the Marlins, but I think you can see and you know, people from home might not be able to see, but the Marlins sort of stock structure is. At least that forward run and pack, and then another off the 10, a bit wider, give you those options off both ruck. Uh, again, just Hunter forcing that ball there to young Seb, who's just come on uh, fresh from the 16s win as well. So, um, again, Paffy, that, that trend of the day of just forcing that pass is, is really stifling the team's attacking options around, around the, the, you know, that red zone. If Marlins are next to score here, that's going to put them in a pretty commanding position. Yeah. Up 19 7 already. Pretty poor penalty there from the snappers in their own 22. You missed that one, Pappy. What was that for? Uh, it's in releases, I think. Yeah. Going a quick tack to young Sam Parks. Dominant carrier and dominant just, around the ruck. Just be watching again. And there there. it is. Oh, there we are. Too quick there. Ollie Kenning sniff, can sniff a try out. And just uh, just a bit too slow, the snappers are set around that ruck area, around that 10 channel, and, and you know you don't have to tell Ollie twice to, to take that around the try line. So Yeah, it's 24 to 7 now, the Marlins. You imagine they'll kick this, taking it to 26 7. I think this feel a bit of a momentum shift in this game now. I think Marlins have come out pretty, pretty fired up in the second half, and snappers are sort of a bit flat. Um, Again, I wouldn't know what the field position numbers are, but I don't think the snappers have spent much time in the Marlins half this game. No, obviously early on it all started with that kickoff, didn't it? Um, you know, that, that missed kickoff, forcing the pressure, and, and Marlins have had all the possession since then. So, um, yeah, look, snappers are really going to just have to regroup here and just start executing and, and holding on to that ball. With the Harbour Knights, how have you found trying to mix the two, you know, line-out calls, scrums, back plays? And... Oh, look, it's, it's been hard. We pretty much had to start again in regards to calls and an extra two sessions under our belt this week. Puffy will hopefully show out there today and um, up in Glen Innes yeah, last week, it was it was, it was was good to get the result, but definitely, um, you know, we, we've got a lot to work on, so... Um, Kick off here to Snappers. It's gone long. Good take there. Oh, great carry there from uh, young Ash Chapman. One of those guys who he does a lot of tight work, Ash, and doesn't get the opportunity to run much because he's obviously um, around the, in and around the ruck area, but very strong in the contact there. I think that's uh, what we're seeing there with those penalties is that the refs this year are very focused on the ball player putting that ball back very quickly. Yeah. It can be hard, I think. Especially when you see a run, a dominant run like that, yeah. it's um, be a tough penalty to swallow when you feel like you've probably dominated the defence there. But that's rugby. That's rugby. That's refereeing, as we said earlier about the about the different perception of referees. So Tonksy here just trying to hurry up the snappers. <laughs> it's 26 to seven with about 25 minutes to go. Snappers. Bit of a scrappy line out there. It's gone over the back. Backs are set left, but probably taking it in one too many times into the forwards, and Marlins have dominated them in defence there. There's a few penalties in a row now there, Puffy. You'd think Tonksy might be looking for a card here soon as young Nicky looking to sniff out a try. 
But um, as a victim of a Tonksy LA card, he doesn't mind him. <laughs> that's that's you know that's probably fair, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there it is again. You, you, yeah, oh, he's slowing it down, and you'd uh, assume he'd be talking, pulling someone out here. No, it's the one. wrong area to be giving yeah, away that's penalties. that's right. Great chop tackle there, young Ash Chapman. Snappers look good when they get that quick ball, recycled put it out to the, that's a nice little inside ball. Great work there. Yes, that's a great little play there from young Chapman, number nine, to I think it was Harry Dickings that's gone over on the inside there. Yeah, it was the old Gregan ball, isn't it? He's, he's jumped out, out to that t two defender and, and the little flick back in on the inside. So that's the result the, the snappers needed, Paffy, really. Um, to get himself back in the game. 24 minutes remaining, and they really ne they needed to be the team to score next. Yeah, 26-12. It's a big kick here. Needs this kick. They need all the points they can get. Um, you always find in under-18, it's a momentum game. It shifts so quickly in junior rugby that if you can get a roll on, it's not hard to score quick points. i tell you what, Paffy, I'm glad we're playing in Coffs Harbour today <laughs> and not Walker. A, a beautiful 19 degrees, not much cloud cover, and, and a slight a slight uh, southerly breeze as well. So I'm very much looking forward to playing out there today, as opposed to what you know normally Walker. Last time yeah. I played in Walker was minus eight degrees on a cricket pitch that was frozen. So it, it seems like every ground in New England has a cricket pitch, <laughs> <laughs> and they're frozen. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 one of those things, you know. When, when they're in, in the middle of the field and no one really likes getting tackled on it, so you sort of avoid it. But Successful conversion. <coughs> How'd you go shearing the cows off the paddock last week at Glen Innes? Mate, was... mate the, cows, the cows were a bit tough. The goats were harder, I think. Um, but, nah, look, we, it, was, it was cold up there, wasn't it, Paffy, that second half? But, um, you know... Big thanks to Glen Innes for hosting us up there last, last week. It's it is a beautiful part of the of the country, just not not in winter, unfortunately. <laughs> so where is the coldest place you've played rugby? Yeah, it was Walker, mate. Yeah. It was Walker. It was a school game uh, back when I was in year eleven and twelve, and and like I said, it was I think it was minus eight degrees. So <laughs> boys ran out with with uh, jackets and jumpers over, and then their jerseys yeah. over the top. It was <laughs> it was pretty cold. Uh, you actually don't want to be a back in those no, conditions. No, you don't. You don't no, the ball and <laughs> you no. freeze in the week. Well, Knights first grade winger Aaron Rigney didn't didn't get a touch <laughs> a, a bit on the couple of couple of couple of minutes on the last weekend and looked like he was he was about to go into hypothermia. Yeah, so a couple of games in Armidale when it was sleeting, he was sort of begging to be subbed <laughs> off to, to get, on to get the, a jumper on. Jumper. Yeah. Here we go. This traditional again, snappers tight five, keeping it tight. Centered big Nicky up there. With, Really been quite dominant all day with his carries. He's um, definitely one to watch. I think we're, the senior coaches have been waiting for him to get old enough to get a run in some of those senior grades. He's um, a very handy player. I've, it was actually, um, I was not sure who knocked it on there, but it's actually, um, it's funny you say that, mate. There's been a, a lot of chat scene uh, being thrown around. He's actually had to sit down with the, with the Snappers first grade coaches. So, ah, uh, with the Marlins first grade coaches. So, oh, uh, it could be. <laughs> Look, it wouldn't be unheard of for Marlins to poach players. So. <laughs> oh, come on, mate. <laughs> Southern uh, Cross University comments the yeah. other week. So, no, no, it wasn't. <laughs> we uh, we actually haven't got any comments, boys. We, we've got a couple of our. Uh, of ex uh, Sawtell players, and that's about it. But uh, but it has been good to see some of the leagues come across. Um, I think they've had their eyes open in terms of so they've sort of jumped into the forward pack and then realised it's a yeah, lot more a, rugby. There's more, than more there to is. it. That's that's exactly right. Great backline play there from the Marlins, and we yeah. see Hunter Churchill making good gains there. And there oh, it is again, that just that pop pass. But luckily enough, they've they've gotten away with it. Um, Great start of play there from Jack Kenning. Just a little a little show and then the ball out the back there to Hunter. So Marlins again on the attack. Great carry from Sam Park. It's been really good all day, Sam. Oh, and Jack Kenning, another little a little dummy there. So you can feel the pressure's really yeah. starting to build here. And I think this is where Marlins are probably at their best is when they get this roll on. They just... 
seem to set their structures really well when yeah, they're in front foot. They're, 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 finishing the, they're finishing the opportunities in this red zone here really well. Again, I think you've got to be watching for Leroy Davis Absolutely. here again. He's, he's coming for it. He's <laughs> coming out off his, off his left wing and he's looking to sniff out another try here, young Leroy. So He's uh, definitely making the front row for Tenerty happy. Seagulls on the wing and this comes in for some tries. <laughs> and he might get kicked out of the front row club for this. <laughs> Oh, that's a big penalty there. Massive penalty. What was that for, Paffy? You see that? I, did, I didn't see that one. He hasn't really signalled it. Hasn't yet. signalled it yet, Tongsi. So, not sure what that's for there down the right-hand corner, but massive release of pressure there for the snappers, Paffy. We'll take that one. Nice little nudge there for touch. Big line-out, but for snappers here. The line-out's been a bit suspect in the second half. If they lose this, Marlon are in a great spot to attack from it. I think we've seen they've got some pretty good counter-attacking players in that back line if they do get a quick turnover ball. I think we were talking about those leagueies that have come over. You've played both codes, what do you, especially as a forward. What's the biggest difference that you've found across the two? Oh, mate, the, the, the genuine and the good thing about rugby league is anyone can walk off the street and, and understand it and, yeah. and, and, and play it in a sense if they've yeah, got the, the athletic watch, yeah. attribute, attributes, you know, so... Um, I guess that whenever someone does come across, you just you got to tell them every everything's a competition. Yeah. You know, you look at every facet of, of rugby: line out, scrum, you know, tackle, kickoffs. Everything's a, a competition, so you just sort of got to remind them it's it's about that effort on effort. As Marlins go short here and looking to attack their player, hopefully young Mike Spignolio, not Jack Kenning getting chopped down in the centre field, but. Again, Marlins going into their structure here, sending Sam Parks up, great metres again. Uh, for the people at home who might not be aware, there's a fourth grade game today, the Harbour Knights fourth grade versus Fairville going in. There's a few whispers, Bernard Foley, or at least his brother, might <laughs> might have a run around for the Fairville going in. Yeah, so. that'd be a big play if they are. Uh, <laughs> they threw out Big Nardi and... It could uh, could it definitely draw a crowd there. I'm not sure what Japanese rugby view on fourth grade <laughs> contract might say no. Yeah, I, I don't think you. I think that's all rumours <laughs> at the moment. But I tell you what, we've we've definitely got some guys out there in that that fourth grade team. It's got red some hot. got some pretty red hot players in yeah. there. I, I count at least three or four actual first grade players that are that are in that side. So I think Bauer is going to be um, going to be uh, uh, definitely in for a challenge today. I imagine Bauer is going to. No league comp down in uh, Group Three this year, so I think they'll be strong. I think yeah, that's well. true. Yeah, I've heard a couple of rumours that they might have picked up a few Maxwell players. So hopefully across all grades today should be a quality quality yeah. day, Pappy. And obviously a big number fifteen there, um, <laughs> looking to to score a couple of couple of tries couple today, of mate. Pies, yeah, a couple mate, of you know. meat pies. So um, talk us through your prep for the week, mate, right. and how you been? Uh, it's busy. It's. Uh, you know what it's like being on the committee, mate. It's probably the last thing you end up thinking about is, is rugby. But, uh, no, it's been good to come to training and watch the boys. Uh, lucky enough to stand on the uh, on the first grade back line at training. I thought I looked pretty good. I, I don't know about you, but... but yeah, no, look, I gave None you... of the boys have passed me the ball, but that was the only... <laughs> the you look good out there, mate. That's that's the main thing, so... See what, Dave Nickel he's a boss on the on the field. He likes to yell at you. Yeah, look, Dave, it goes back from Davey being a 17-year-old first playing first grade. He, he's one of those guys who who obviously knows what he's doing oh, and, a, and just a bit of a thumble there from, from Jack just as he was going over the line but just the constant pressure at the moment, Paffy. It, it, yeah. they, the snappers can't seem to get out of their, out of their own five metre line. I think um, if I was a snappers water boy, I'd be running out and telling uh, Darcy Collins has probably got the biggest boot on him and I'd be telling him if we get that ball to kick it down the field. If you spend much more time down here, I think Marlins are probably going to ice the game. About 15 minutes to go, 26-14. You don't want to be spending most of the half on your own line. Seems like the wings the winds spun around a bit as well, mate. It's um yeah. be a good opportunity to probably just take a little crash ball here off the back of Nicky and then like we said, pump it as yeah. long and as hard as we can to I, to relieve that pressure. And I think you what you're seeing here is Marlins have been on the attack so long that the fullback's back but there's a lot of space out there on either wing to yeah. find a kick. You know, footy's a funny thing, the bounce of the ball might get lucky if they don't kick it out, so could be a good little opportunity here for Nart. Nah, they've gone and and they're just oh, kill. Oh, and that's and that's the oh. old coach kill. Although it's come oh, off. No. no, it hasn't. No, uh, Jack Kenning toes it through and. I 
think uh, they did ever. <laughs> the opposite of what we said they should do. Oh, they're the old, co the, the old coach killers there. Paffy, a chip inside your own 22. We haven't seen something like that since Josh Rayner played for the Marlins. <laughs> so, uh, if mate, Josh Rayner was playing, but the snappers would have loved that. If yeah, they, if that well, was play. absolutely. The crowd <laughs> definitely would have been giving him heaps. So. Is there a ch chance that Josh Rayner has to play the, the Harbour Knights coming up, I think. That yeah, be... look, it's going to be a, in round four, I think, we'll be at home to the Barbars, so um, obviously going to be a couple of familiar faces there with Joshy Rayner at fullback, and I believe Tommy Davidson, who our North Coast Development Officer has yeah. played with, with them as well, so a couple of familiar uh, familiar faces on, on the other team, yeah. so it should be good, looking forward to hosting the, the Barbars in round four. Great position to attack from here. Oh, not quite the starter they really wanted, but I think Jack was sort of looking for young Michael to come off his hip a bit tighter there, but still into their shape and a little bit flat. And there's that offload again we spoke about all day, that trend. I think this is where snappers need to be looking to get some field position. They get a good penalty here, kick it down the field. Needed that penalty there. Talk about the Harbour Knights, it's been some I mean, you talk about the depth of the teams. We've got Stewie McVicker playing 10 for oh, third grade, look. former country play. You've yep. got some of those guys in third grade. He's a, a good break there from Snappers. Darcy Collin in open field. This is what you want. Strong run there over that. There he is. And there's that. It's good. That, oh, it's See difference in offloads there from Darcy actually getting his shoulders through and yeah. sighting the target as opposed to just flinging it. But yeah. And this the, is Nicky on a run on here. This best, is what you want. Yeah, this is, it. This is what you want there, Paffy. It's just a little bit of composure here now from the snappers. They just need to get yeah. their act together. And Darcy's backing up well there. He's made that break and he's then been the first receiver down the right. There is a space that's sort of shutting down on the right here. The snappers probably just need to keep it in the forwards for a little bit. No, it's... And the kick through there should be forced down there well by Jack. He'll race up to the 22. Probably yeah, look for a quick one here. Himself, yeah, yeah, I dare say he might look to do it. No. Nah. I think that's... Just lacking a bit of composure there. Absolutely, yeah. Probably what happens when you get camped in your own line for yep. most of the half. You think you got to score off every play. Yeah, that's right. Look, I'm not sure if you got a call from the outside or anything there, but probably we just would have been better off holding on to that. Jack does have a, does have a bit of a league background, so he might have been thinking... Yeah, six again <laughs> set. Six yeah, again. that's true. Great kick and great chase in from the This is Marlins. where we just need a bit of composure. Oh, that's oh. a shot. Great shot there from young Alex Pike. I think today some of probably the teams to watch is the, the second grade teams, some of oh. those young blokes, Maxie Shaw, Joe Sewell, you know, Jack Collins, Darcy's older brother, and you know, Mackenzie Davidson, uh, some really good young players. Andrew Martin, there's yeah. some great players. So, it's pretty much a first grade side. If you go through that side, Pappy, it's it's pretty much you know, James one Bellamy was a first grader about 20 kilos ago. So <laughs> well, the big belly, he's had a good off off season <laughs> as well as coming into Corona. So he, he's got to be um, one of the best timers I've ever seen in terms of com completely misses preseason, always <laughs> rocks up just a week out from the season. Yeah, look, he's too too much of a quality player, obviously to yeah. to be hanging out there. So I'm He'll sure once he shreds down at scrum time. Nah, that's right. He's actually sneaky, sneaky skills, Bella. When he gets a little break, he's not he's not too bad with a little. No, quick pass he's or... he's definitely got some skills about him. He's not just a, a scrummager. As we've got an injury here to the snappers, we've got we're going for a bit of a time out. But uh, interesting enough, it was actually James's 30th birthday yesterday. So see how he shows up. We'll today. see. We'll see how he turns up. And and although I think his party's meant to be tonight, um, I, so I think it started early based on a few Snapchats I've seen uh, yeah, floating around. Nah, fair enough. But he's, uh, that's, Bella's never let that stop him from no, running that's right. Class, so. he's, uh, he normally He's normally well and truly warmed up and will still have a big game. Yeah, I think he's one of the uh, party leaders in the club. And, mate, you need those leaders in the club, you know, the, the, the off-field and the social leaders. That, it's things like that, that like bus trips from last weekend and, and team songs that really bring a team together. So Yeah, I think bit, the, the boys bonded probably better than we thought they would. Yeah, uh, absolutely, on that bus trip back. and. Guys like, you know, um, Big Wigo um, Potsy, all those and Potsy and, and guys like that bringing, bringing both clubs together and, and obviously Wigo being a music teacher helps, you know, in regards to, to pitch and sound of team songs. So, yep. um, 
I think it might be one of the, we might need his assistance again in some of the lower grades this week. I'm hoping hoping for a bit of a night blue wash across the day, but uh, that's what we're hoping for. Yeah, it's we'll a, know the song by first grade, I'm sure. I'll, I'll tell you what. Once the first grade hits, and if hopefully we get this big win over Walker, um, you know, it's it's every, no excuses really. Everyone should know the team song by now. It's been a week. Are you feeling a bit of a target on the back? I've had a few mates that are playing in that in that Armadale comp and there's been some big raps put on the Harbour Knights team early. Is it just, are you just more focused on building some of those structures up? I haven't really trained at all. Uh, I, I think so. I think we've got to get through this week first. Um, well, I think everyone knows that Walk will be and is the benchmark at the moment. So, um, and obviously, so oh, it was a, just a little slip of a knock on there at the base of the scrum. That's, that's hard luck there from the snappers. But, um, but yeah, in, in regards to the to the Rams today, it's it's going to be a, a, a cracky a cracker of a game, Puffy. So, yeah. um, like I said, it's it's just I'm glad it's not at Walker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> been pretty lucky with the draw in that regard that we haven't had to go out to Walker this year. But uh, I think they'll definitely. Hopefully, we can take advantage of the heat and uh, run them around a little bit. Absolutely. They've got a big forward pack. Absolutely. Cameron Sweeney's been giving all the gossip about Walker to, to uh, the coaches. So. Obviously, Sweeney, the, um, you know, a snapper stalwart, and uh, you know, Walker boy himself. You'd know what the what the boys are bringing today yeah. from over the other side of the range. So uh, play on there at the scrum. Got to play on at the scrum wheel and good good take there from the snappers. So looking to build their pick and drive structure here and, and hopefully we'll release Darcy yeah. Collins out here, a bit of space out on the left so you probably the problem there is just Nicky's got to isolate he's a strong runner but he can't go one out No, it's it, the the quality against both packs uh, across both packs are too good and we spoke about Nicky all day mate but if you run an isolated and high like that that close to the sideline you, you're really asking for trouble but Bit, a little bit of inexperience there, mate, but also, again, trying to maybe overplay his hand too much. Yeah. I think he's just, just raw talent there and a bit, bit more coaching and, and a bit of blokes getting around him to help him out there. Just another good line Great out there. take from Zeb. Um, obviously, Shipton up, who Dylan's been taking all day, and a good exit there from Alex Pike. That's pretty well textbook there from what the... The coaches would want, although that chase, oh, no. Michael Spinalio has just broken an ankle down <laughs> on that step. He's, that uh, was some great footwork there. Who was that, Puffy? Uh, that was number 11 for the snappers. That was Tom Crossingham. Tom Crossingham, yeah, yeah, great footwork. They didn't learn from the last play. They've just gone straight, straight back yeah. to, to Nicky by himself. Off on the blind and, and, and lost it again, yeah. I think that just probably snappers looking for home run plays and it's just not coming off. So... Looking here, I'd say here, Paffy will look for a, a quick ball on Dylan or Seb here. And Dino's a bit, bit puffed there at the back of the line out. That's why they're going to get. <laughs> you got to be a bit quicker than that, Dino, yeah. at the back of the line out, mate. <laughs> I think it must be a, for the 18s to have. They've got two jumpers there, but they both lift as yeah, well. Yeah, that's so right. That it makes a big difference, yeah. It'd be hard to defend that line out, not knowing which one's going to get it. Great, Great take line. again again from Dylan, and we'll look for a crash. No, we've gone a kick, which I don't think that was the call. Um, Young Tom Crossingham, another good yeah. little play there. He's released the released one. I think that's Isaac down the wing there. Is that offload again, Pappy? Yeah. yeah. Thankfully, uh, Tonks' whistles saved the snappers there. Marlins lineout's definitely been the superior yeah, it's, it, today. It's, it's been quite dominant today, hasn't it? And obviously, uh, you know, the coaching staff Eli and Joel Cooper, who are both first graders, and Joel being a first grader in uh, the Harbour Knights, he's um, you know obviously with all his experience playing and coaching, it's it's something you'd, you'd definitely see. As clocks just ticked over under six minutes, and and. Uh, we see the girls starting to warm up in the back, uh, starting to make their way over the background, so not much time left. And, and really, it's make or break for here to the snappers. This is a massive scoring opportunity for them. That, that right zone, like you said, Puffy, line out just outside the, just, just outside the 10 metre line, and, and I think you just got to get it to Darcy. Yeah, what, what you probably can't see at home is that, um, is that, I've seen, sorry. 
Good take there from the snappers as a tap down. And I think Darcy Collins is just sitting out wider there, but just good couldn't get it. There. Alex Pike's defence today, I, I want to give him a wrap. He's been outstanding all day. He's not the biggest centre and he's traditionally more of a 10, um, but he's defensively he's been fantastic. So shut that down well and then force the turnover. And young Josh Miller is the bloke he put the hit on. He, he runs a pretty hard line, so yeah. he's done well there. Absolutely. Um, Ollie Kenning going the old Latho torpedo <laughs> there, so good to see uh, young players with that sort of confidence there. I think um, I think really the difference between the two teams today has just been that reverting back to that structure. I think that Marlins have been better at keeping their structure going and they've kept it going. That in the long. There we are. And that's I was right first. behind that. That yeah, looked pretty good. I thought, I thought that was all right, Pappy. <laughs> but anyway, that's all right. I think Tom sits sending a little bit to the right there. Isn't he? So that's all right. Um, you know, he hasn't really thrown a bad line out all day, Leroy. So just, uh, we'll give him that one. Just seeing all the Walker boys rolling in. We've got cowboy boots and jeans all over the place. So. No, that's good. And, and look, that's that's what we wanted. And this is a beauty about the New England Coupon playing in a different in competition, mate. We we go on cowboy boots instead of our uh, instead of thongs and, and, and boardies. So, um, you know, that's a beauty in, in, the, in having a, you know, the diversity of rugby we've got now. Yeah, a couple of thousand dollars worth of RMs out there. <laughs> Great control there at the back of the scrum there from Nicky, but just lifting and going a bit too Lead high up there the first scrums. grade. I did note that Cameron Swaney has pinched himself a, uh, he's come back out of retirement and pinched himself a bench spot. How many text messages did you get this week from Cameron? Oh, only a couple, mate. Um, he, mate, obviously it's having a, a playing against Walker and, and having someone with, with Sweeney's quality. It's, it's, uh, it was really, it was a, I think we saw no him come on for, me. for reserve grade the other week and he three or four ball yeah, that, five uh, minutes. He's pretty strong. He, he is very good over the ball, Sweeney, and that's an un <laughs> unlucky scrum there from the snappers, and pretty much sums up their day, really, just get knocking it through. And good low tackle there from Young Chapman. Um, you can hear Jack Kenning barking in the background. You can feel the pressure starting to build, like you said earlier, Paffy. This is where they they really find their shape and their form, and. Oh. Leroy, Leroy Davis, a little little dummy to Jack out the back there and trying Jack, it. Jack wants it here. He's, he's definitely calling for it. He's got a mile of backs here out to, to open up. And Alex Pike squared up well there. Just a little short oh. ball and a great ball on the inside to put Hunter Churchwell over there. And and you could see why Jack was screaming for that ball with them now the number, the sheer numbers they had in the backs there, Paffy, to pretty well, I think that might put him away. I think that's uh, something that Brendo's big on in, I know, in coaching is that you don't need to run plays all the time. That was just simple hands yeah. and got it to the numbers and, and, you, and you can score. Nah, look, that's that's perfect example of hip square, just just marking up and squaring up on your man and, and, and giving a nice, short, simple pass. And, and like I said, it was just the sheer numbers, but it was that little over the top ball there yeah. that we've, 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 we've been knocking all day. So <laughs> one's finally come off out about a thousand. The uh, 14 Riley uh, Kilo Meyer there threw that little pass back in. He's some tall timber. There's not much to him, but he's got that offload and he's done well. Joel Cooper out in the middle of the field there. The coach obviously barking orders and and uh, you know finalising, getting the guys to finish this game off. Just under two minutes remaining, minute and a half. So it's uh, been been a pretty in a sense, now we're reflecting, Pappy, being a bit of a one-way game. Yeah, um, Snap has started well, obviously. I think I think it's just the Marlins, a bit, bit more class, a bit more structure. It's clear those boys have played a lot of rugby together. They know what they're doing. It's a great kick again from Alex Pike. That's his second one from the sideline today. Yeah, they, so uh, I'm sure the Snapchats will be sent after the game, a bit of bragging rights. Yeah, no, nah, absolutely. It's um, that's one the boys will be taking to school on, on Monday. So I think that's two from two for the Marlins 18s against the Snappers this year too. Is it? Jeez. Well, mate, it's it's future's good here in Cross Rugby. Obviously, these are the two teams feeding into the night. So you know, we might potentially, you know, with the Mid North Coast season finishing three weeks earlier than the night season, we might potentially see a couple of these guys step up into into night's colours. Yeah, could make a big difference come finals time. 
few of these handy young blokes off the bench in a, in a tight game is always good. I think, you know, and this is great to see. I mean, even New England's a massive comp and they don't have the junior comp like this. So yeah, it's that's really right. Big to, to have this going before we get into the seniors later this afternoon. And that's time up there, closing closing moments of the game here and pretty well just be waiting for a, a little error or a knock on or someone to kick it out. But snappers obviously want to try and get that last try to make the score on a little bit more respectable and, and obviously you never know with the season coming with for and against. So short season, you gotta gotta get all the points you can get. Uh, probably not, probably not the option you wanted, but <laughs> And throw it and Hunter look to he's he's quite quick young Hunter Churchill. I don't see oh he's gone the, the cross field banana into the boys but I think that'll be enough for the game. Coming off his shin it didn't quite come off so great game there from both the 18 sides and um definitely a few players to watch there, Paffy. No worries, so thank you AJ. Uh, I've got to go get ready for the Walker third grade. So uh, everyone keep watching. The women's game's up next and uh, should be a good day at rugby. Yeah, it should be a great day. Thanks for having you, Paffy. Big thanks again for Kyle Hands Media. And thanks, boys, for joining us. So, of course, stay tuned, guys. We're going to be flicking over to um, the women's game. We can smell the liniment. Uh, <laughs> The, uh, the girls are getting uh, are certainly about to take the field and, um, and uh, this will be a cracker. These uh, Coffs Harbour uh, Marlins versus Snappers in the ladies, ten aside. And uh, the Snappers got the, the wood on them uh, in, the last, in the last encounter. And um, I was speaking to a few of the Marlins last night and uh, they, um, they said they learned a lot from the, um, from the first match and they're going to come back... Um, come back with a few surprises so uh, stay tuned you'll have to flick over to the new link and uh, of course subscri subscribe to Kyle Hands Media and you'll get notified of the, of the live feeds and you won't miss any of the action from Rugby Park